In the year 2000, the case could be found in a park on 17th Avenue in Calgary, slang and weed by the half and quarter pound. Unlike now, I had cash followed on my pockets. My crew controlled that park. We locked it down. We swept it clean. Only sold shrooms and weed. We kept the fiends of the good part of town. But every now and then, one would sneak into our park under cover of dark, curl up under a tree, and then come stumble in free by 9.30 when I show up to start my 10 o'clock shift. Now, provided said crackhead didn't give me no lip, I'd say wash up real quick in the fountain and leave. Maybe toss up a joint with four bucks for something to eat. But this one sunny Sunday in the hot summer heat, I show up for my shift, and sure as shit, I see Chief. Now, Chief's what we on the street like to call walking dead. Because he's way, 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 way past crackhead. He's crack soul, he's crack spirit, he's so cracked you can hear it. He's got open sores on his face because in the quarters he begs. Someone cut off his left thumb once they broke both his legs. He's got every disease, epilepsy, strep, HIV. He must be writing a book because he's got heps A through C. And now I hate to see someone living like that. And I hate to think that no one's giving a rat's ass about what happens to Chief. But we've spoken at length, and I feel no grief. Like me when I was a fiend, he chose his own path. But unlike the chaos, he never rose up from the wrath. Three decades hard blasting, man, you do the math. At 55, he still thinks the world owes him a living, that everyone's wallets must just be forgiving of his terrible odor, diseases, addictions, and rags. Detritic miasma, urine steep sleeping bags, so creeping she staggers out from under a tree. And it's a wonder to me that the guy's even alive. The man stands six foot three, but his back's bent to five, five. And now I've played out this scene in my head countless times, and no matter how hard I try, I just can't make it rhyme. So I'm simply gonna stop and say that that day I thought she'd make his way towards our park fountain. Eight feet wide, maybe. Two feet deep. In the center, a small metal stem space for the parabolic arc of water proximity. Three feet in the air. Chief's wounded hand met the immaculate marble stonework almost simply. And as if in rebuttal, when he leaned forward to take a sip, he slipped, smashing his mouth on the spout. The sound of enamel on steel preceded a splash, which I naturally followed with a laugh until I realized that Chief had failed to resurface. The world slowed down. I knew that with all my immediate help it would drown, and my first thought was still, what if this happened on purpose? I mean, I'm not one to say that a man's life is right worthless, but Chief's life's not really a life, it's existence at best. It may make me a fascist, but I say it's mere resistance to death. He can't outdistance his breath, he can barely stand. He's more walking biohazard than he is man. And so I struggle with thought. Who am I to judge versus, why the fuck not? Maybe this is his way out. I can't say for sure that it's any more peaceful than dying of AIDS, but somehow I doubt that he thanked me today. Nonetheless, I still snapped, ran up and transferred him from pond to lawn, and there was the sun shone upon shattered teeth and remnants of lip. I see the Chief's not breathing. Now here I got myself quite a choice, because first off, Chief's just fucking laminated in crud. Not to mention the fact that I'm sitting here covered in some account with most contaminated blood. And I was supposed to perform CPR on this mess? I couldn't do it, so I just did my best. Chest compressions and hit to the side. I kept on thinking, God damn, I guess this walking dead just died. But sure enough, he took air, and I just stood and shook there, staring down at my hand, and this shattered excuse for a man thinking, what the fuck have I done? My first thought was to run, so I hopped on my bike and was home in about four minutes flat. No one was there when I burst in the door, straight the shit out of the cat, went straight to the shower, stripped down in the tub. For the next half hour, it was hot water and bleach, I stood there and scrubbed to the burn. And of course, I returned to my park to see what was going down. There were cops and paramedics and guys in white gowns like that shit from E.T. And then three EMTs come rush up to me and say, are you the one who pulled them out? Are you the one who pulled them out? We need you to follow us. Have you been in contact with any other people? We need to know. Have you been in contact with any other people? From my troubles, I got the world's biggest stress test three, six, and twelve months later and miraculously managed to fail with pride. Not so lucky for Chief, I'd like to say that he died, but three years later I came back to town with some drum and bass and sure as shit, I ended up coming face to face with Chief. Beyond all belief, he looks a million times worse. And given the opportunity now, without a doubt, I put time in reverse and let himself submerge till that poor bastard drowned. Because if it's change versus choice and one can't choose to change, then one's living to die and it's wrong and it's strange of us to suffer their suffering. And when I suffer nothing, I mean, yeah, humanity's cruel, but it can also be loving. Besides, shoving three bucks in his hat don't help Chief. He needs a hospital bed and some social relief, addictions counseling, and a warm place to die. So instead of tossing the tweet while passing by, I try and contribute to AIDS research. Lobby the provincial government for a higher welfare rate and donate what cans I can to my local food bank. Damn straight, I get two thanks in return from the parents that burn on the street. And they'll never learn of my Negro contribution to their well-being and betterment, but I know that it's their best interest I've got in mind when I shift the structure, hoping it'll be, a bit, be <laughs> hoping it'll be better when it's been rearranged. Because me, I'm just a piss poor poet who can't afford to be making bills to help feed people like Chief. But as a whole, humanity can't afford not to make some change.